Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the concept for the RP2000 career mode for Realism Overhaul currently in KSP 1.8.1. This career mode is meant to be much simpler than the RP1 career mode and much easier for people who are coming from stock to get into because RP1 is very involved, especially with Kerbal Construction time and other things. And I think that there should be a way, because a lot of people who are coming from stock want guidance as far as how to play the game and career mode somewhat provides that and i thought that there should be a simpler career mode for realism overall so they can get into it because realism overhaul itself is already much more complicated than stock in certain ways like with ignition limits and stuff like that and so they people already have to adapt to that and i felt that there should be a career mode that can do the rest of the stuff you know uh, give them contracts and things to do while they adapt to the new situation with real solar system. Uh, so to that end, I wanted a tree that was more suited to the year 2000 rather than starting in 1950. So that you're a tech company, you're a, a new space company that started in the year 2000 and it would simulate that instead of going through the historical progression because frankly, I've done the historical progression quite enough. And these days, you know, if I would like some way of simulating if you just start a tech company or a space company right now. So, taking a look at what I've got so far, because I've started on it, and to some extent this video is an explanation of what I've been doing with Realism Overhaul off to the side while I've been making the stock videos. The stock videos are giving me time to do this, basically. If you're going like, where are all the Realism Overhaul videos? Well, this is what I've been working on. So. Start new uh, career. I'll just call it RP2000 test. And um, th there's nothing special here. It's all the same stuff. It depends on what other mods you have as well. I haven't changed anything as far as that's concerned. Uh, so I'll leave that be because that's not important for what I'm going to show you. Uh, so let's start. Okay, I've got Cat and Escape Canaveral in here right now. Uh, so we got the Welcome to Space Center, KOS has its thing. But you'll note that the date is 2000, January 1st, 2000, and we're starting at the right time, both in Kerbal Alarm Clock and in that clock there too, with RSS Date Time, which uh, sets that clock too. So we are good on that, and there is a patch for that, and it's a little bit complicated. So when I release this, there'll be sort of a patch for Kerbal Alarm Clock and a patch for uh, RSS Date Time a new configuration for that. So that's the first thing. And of course we have to set the epoch correctly so that the planets are in the right position. In order to do that, in a different install, I time warped to the year 2000, January 1st to verify. And the only thing I didn't verify was the moon position. That's a little bit, I don't know, but I'm, I'm all the planets seem to be in the same place right now as they did if I just time warped from uh, 1950 or 1951 to 2000 in a different install. So they're all starting in what should be the right place in theory. So we've got that going for us. But most of the work is on the tech tree. So I mainly feel like I have three things to do. Uh, arranging the tech tree, getting the pricing right, and then dealing with the contracts. And maybe I'm wrong and I'm forgetting something, but we'll. Uh, that's what I'm working on right now. So the tech tree is mostly community tech tree, and that's because it's compatible with a lot of parts already. And the idea behind this is that you, you as a tech company, these should all be generic parts. They're not like historical parts or anything, or any parts that are identifiably belonging to a major company. Minor companies maybe, like uh, for Rocket Lab, Rocket Lab's parts might be mixed in here, uh, but not a Boeing or Lockheed or anything like that or even SpaceX. They all have their parts up here. And basically what this is, is it mimics the idea that you as a little tech company or space company might make a contract with Energomash or Energia or SpaceX or ISRO or Usenoi or SCNSA, which is just Chinese Space Administration, or Aerojet Rocketdyne General Dynamics, not much on General Dynamics though. Uh, that's mostly plain parts. Uh, Lockheed and uh, EADS or Thales Elena Elenia. Sorry, I lumped all the European parts in the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, uh, ULA, 
uh, Norfolk Grumman, a Mitsubishi, a Blue Origin, and JAXA. Uh, Mitsubishi is mainly to rockets, JAXA is mainly to probe parts and the HTV itself. Uh, they have their current production and some of them also have past production and future production depending on what their plans are. So we see ULA past production includes the Delta II rocket, for instance, and uh, Norfolk Grumman old star boosters. Um, I, sometimes I have to simplify uh, where they go, but uh, for instance, the Lunar Module Ascent Engine was made both by Bell and Rocketdyne. Uh, but I assume the Bell part, and if you trace who bought what, uh, eventually that ends up with Norfolk Grumman, but I'm not sure if they actually have the blueprints or anything like that. Uh, Grumman, of course, made the lunar lander, so um, presumably they might know something about the engine too. Uh, Mitsubishi past production, if, it depends on mods that you have, you might have parts there. And then the, uh, what you got, uh, H3 parts for Mitsubishi, and so forth. So we would have... Uh, ISRO, I should have more for. Uh, I have the Gagayan spacecraft here. I need to tell it where to go. Uh, or is it at start right now? Anyway, somewhere around I have spacecraft to fill that area with. You know, these should go in there. Anyway, so you would make a contract. You give them, give them some research and then pay them to redevelop. Or if they're current production, you'd have to pay a whole lot up front for development cost but you might pay quite a lot for the part itself. Um, for past production, you got to pay a lot to redevelop it, basically, and maybe not so much for the part itself. However, the cheapest route is just to develop it yourself. Uh, so if you really want to play with those old fangled parts or, you know, build a meter station, for instance, you can do that by setting up a deal with those guys or uh, you know, you can just use the generic parts and figure it out yourself. And so here we have all the generic stuff, B9 procedural wings, some cargo bays, all the parts that stock players should be familiar with. A whole lot of variants of engines because of advanced gen engines. So technically, uh, I suppose those should go in under different manufacturers, but I only focused on space manufacturers for that stuff. So, you know, you've got the Twitch engine. I don't know why, I, I guess those were never... Uh, configured by Realism Overhaul. This AJ-1019 should go up there. I don't know if I want the stock engine stand up there or if I should just change those configurations or not. But uh, these also have to go into their appropriate categories. Mostly thanks to aerospace consolidation, it's not too hard to make these. But I have some space for extra ones if it turns out I need them. And we can leak over here in the tech tree. But right from the start, you can make a deal with these guys. Uh, but you won't have the science to unlock. Right now, they're all at five, but and then these uh, past production and future productions are at 30, or uh, ULA is 100 for some... Oh, I think future production is at 100 and past production is at 30 science. So, uh, but I might change that. I might change it to depending on how many parts they have in them. So, we've got that stuff, and otherwise, the parts are what you'd expect, and they should have... Well... One group of parts that uh, will end up in here are the EDB's own parts. I haven't put them in the right place yet, but of course I've got my own engines like the ED1, ED2, and so forth, and I'll place those. And I intend, if it turns out that there aren't enough good parts in this body, especially early on, because a lot of them ended up over here because they're assigned to a particular, t especially the engine parts, then I'll just make new parts to fill it up. Um, but yeah, some of these do have to be moved. But ultimately, you're going to be able to develop stuff and make your own rockets is the goal. So yeah, that is the idea. That's the concept. That's the layout. And I'm going to try and make it work. But as you can see, I've already done a lot of the part placement stuff. More than a thousand parts have been placed in the appropriate categories either here or down there. So that's a lot. They're not all showing up right now because they're not all installed in this install. You can't put all of the mods in at the same time. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, that's the concept. That's what I'm working on. I just wanted to explain that by way of apologizing to people that I don't have a whole lot of realism overhaul videos 
that this is uh, you you will hopefully eventually get a test of this career mode in realism overhaul once i'm done messing around with it so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time